The backpropagation algorithm is a heart of deep learning. That is the core reason why we can have those advanced models like large language models. In a previous video, we saw that we can use a computational graph that is built as part of deep learning models to compute any derivatives of the network outputs with respect to the network inputs. I'll put the link in the description. Now we're going to see how we can use this computational graph to get the network to learn from the data by using the backpropagation algorithm. Let's get into it. So now that we understood how the computational graph works, we can understand why we cared about it in the first place. And the reason we care about it is the backpropagation algorithm. So let's consider an uh, input X. If we pass this input through a neural network, we're going to get an output. An output is a prediction of the target we're trying to learn from the neural network. And this is a target. So we are training the neural network to understand how to predict predictions that are close to the target. How do we tell the model how to update its weights such that the output predictions that are close to the target. The idea is to compare the predictions and the targets and to create a loss function. The loss function is a function of the predictions and the target, and it is a function that captures how far away the predictions are from the target. And because we would like the predictions to be close to the target, we want to minimize the loss function. Just to make sure we understand what can be loss functions, we're going to look at a couple of examples. The first example is a log loss. This is a loss function that is used typically for binary classification. So you see that we compare the predictions with the targets. And they are compared through a cross entropy function that is the target times the log of the predictions. And we do that with the opposite of the predictions. So the positive samples and the negative sample in our binary classification problem. Another loss function is a mean squared error loss. So this is a loss that measures the square distance between the predictions and the target. And we want to minimize the distance between those two variables. So in practice, how do we minimize the loss function? So let's consider this equation. So we have a function of x and theta that is equal to a prediction. F is a neural network that takes input variable x and generate predictions y hat. So we have x being the features, we have y hat being the predictions, and we have theta that represents all the different weights of the network. The network is represented by many different parameters that can be learned through statistical learning and that will adjust the functional relationship between the inputs and the outputs. So we want to learn the weights such that the functional relationship between the inputs and the outputs are as close as possible to the functional relationship that we have between the inputs and the actual target that we are trying to learn. When we think about minimizing a function, we usually think about the gradient. Computing the gradient tell us what is the direction of the tangent to the curve? The minimum of the curve will be placed at a point where the slope of the tangent is equal to zero. So the tangent will be horizontal. So what we do, we compute the gradient of the curve with respect to the variable that we are trying to optimize, and we set it to zero. And the points where the gradient with respect to the variable we are trying to optimize are zero, are the points where the tangent is going to be horizontal. Not all the points where the slope of the tangent is equal to zero are going to be the minimum value of this curve. They can be local minima, but the one true global minima of the curve is sure to follow this equation. But this equation is actually very hard to solve. So the way we usually solve it is through some optimization techniques like the gradient descent algorithm. So let's look at an example of this gradient descent algorithm. Let's imagine that we start at a specific point in this curve. So we have a specific value for all the different parameters in the network, and we have a specific loss that relates to that set of parameters. The game for gradient descent algorithm is to find a better set of weights. And to find a better set of weights, what we're going to do we're going to start from the initial point theta one here, 
and we're going to follow the tangent. So if we look at the gradient, the gradient is indicating us what direction we should follow to decrease the loss function. If I follow the gradient, I'm pretty sure that the new set of parameters is going to be better than the previous one. I move to that point by descending in this curve following the gradient. We have new here, that is just a learning parameter. This is a hyperparameter that I can adjust to move more or less far from the original point. Now, let's assume that theta 2 is now the initial point. So I can always follow the gradient to get a better set of the parameters theta, such that the loss function is lower. So I'm going to follow the gradient again at the point theta 2, and I'm going to jump from theta 2 to theta 3. And I jump from theta 2 to theta 3. So again, I followed the gradient and I was able to minimize further the loss function. I can do that again. I start from theta 3 and I'm going to jump to theta 4. So I follow the gradient that I can measure at theta 3 and I jump to theta 4 by updating the parameters theta 3 and jump to theta 4. And I can iterate this process as many times as I need. Let's imagine that we arrive to a point theta n minus 1. I follow the gradient at this point, theta n minus 1, and I jump from theta n minus 1 to theta n. I need a condition to stop the iterative process such that I somehow recognize that I arrived at a local minima or a global minima. And you could imagine that theta n provides us a ending condition of this iterative process because we are able to measure that the gradient at that point is actually very close to zero. So we don't need to move further because we already arrive at a point that is at the lowest point of this curve. Again, being at a gradient that is equal to zero does not guarantee global minima. It can be a local minima. So let's see now how the backpropagation algorithm can help us compute the gradients for all the different parameters that are contained into the different computational blocks. So let's imagine that we have many different computational blocks and we have here a neural network and I'm going to show you the forward pass. So we have an input x that goes through the first computational block. We get x1. We go through the second computational block. We get x2, etc. until we get xn. And the final computational block is supposed to provide us an output that is an estimate of the target we're trying to predict. So now that we have the estimate of the target, we can compute the loss function. This is just a simple function to be computed directly. When we choose a loss function, we need to be careful that the analytical form of this loss function is easy to take a derivative of. So here we can assume that we can take the gradient of the loss function with respect to the output of the network. And we can store this gradient at the y hat node. The goal of the backpropagation algorithm is to compute the gradients of the loss function with respect to the different parameters that live in the different computational blocks. So let's assume that we want to compute the gradient of the loss function with respect to the parameters of the last layer. So we have the layer n here, this computational block, and I'm going to call the parameters living in that computational block to be theta n. The gradient of the loss function with respect to theta n is equal to the gradient of the output of the network with respect to theta n times the gradient of the loss function with respect to the output of the neural network. We already computed the gradient of the loss function with respect to y hat, and we just need to compute the gradient of y hat with respect to theta 1. Again, we can do that easily by using the computational graph. We can backpropagate the gradients from the output to the input, and we can compute the gradients of the output with respect to the different parameters of the network. So the computation of the gradient of the loss function with respect to the theta n is just a simple product, and I can store this gradient for this layer. Now, to make sure I can backpropagate the gradients for the different layers, I need to capture the gradients that will be stored at the node xn. 
Again, this is very similar to what we did before. So the gradient of the loss function with respect to Xn is equal to the gradient of the output of the network with respect to Xn times the gradient of the loss function with respect to the output of the network. So again, I already computed this gradient, so I can just pull it from the previous node. And the gradient of the output of this computational block with respect to the input of this computational block can be computed by using the computational graph. And I can now store this gradient at this node. So you understand that I can iterate this process and I can compute the different gradients for the layers, so the computational blocks, and the different nodes that are intermediary between the different computational blocks. So let's assume that we already stored the gradients as the different layers and the gradients as the different nodes up to X2, and I need to compute the gradients for X1. So what I want to compute is the gradient of the loss function with respect to X1. This is equal to the gradient of X2 with respect to X1. So the gradient of the output of the computational block respect to the input of the computational block times the gradient of the loss function with respect to x2. So the gradient of the loss function with respect to x2 is already computed. It's stored in the previous node, so I can pull it. And again, I can compute the gradient of the output with respect to the input by using the simple computational graph. I have now just a product to compute and I can store the gradient in x1. So now I need to compute the gradients for this layer. So the gradient for this layer, I'm going to call this layer zero. So the parameters of this layer are going to be theta zero. And the gradient of the loss function with respect to theta zero is equal to the gradient of the output, so x1, with respect to theta zero times the gradient of the loss function with respect to x1. The gradient of the loss function with respect to x1 is already computed, so I just need to pull it from the previous node, and I can easily compute the gradient of the output with respect to the parameters by using the computational graph, and I can store the gradient for this layer. Now I computed all the gradients for all the different layers that are available in my neural network. So what I need to do is I simply apply the gradient descent algorithm for each of the layers. So here I update the theta zeros by following the gradients that are computed at theta zero. Again, I can update the theta ones by following this gradient that is already computed. Again, I can use the gradient that is computed here to update the theta twos. And I can do that for all the layers of the network. So here I use the gradient that is computed for n minus one, and I update the theta n minus ones and I update the parameters of the last layer by using the gradient that is already computed. And this is the optimization step. So I had a forward pass where I computed the output of the network. I then computed the loss function and its gradient, and I backpropagated the different gradients for all the computational blocks and the different nodes by using the chain rules and I backpropagated the different gradients for all the different layers and the different nodes in the backward pass. And once I computed all the different gradients, I can update all the different parameters of the whole network. 